So, first thing I'll, I'll do is just caveat this. I'm only going to talk about Windows here. I do not know Macs. I don't have Linux desktops. I apologize in advance if those of you who don't like PCs with Windows on them and don't have them, this video is no use to you. The rest of us who are using Windows 10 and or 11, uh, Windows 10 after 19H1 update with big managers fuss thing where he moved the uh, task button and so on, that update or Windows 11 native, um, the disk management application will allow you to partition SD cards without having to buy a, a partition management software. If you go to support.microsoft.com, you know you're talking to the horse, as it were. I'm going back to the guy that wrote it, because I, him I trust, even though I know he gets his stuff. His stuff gets out of date, and he doesn't go back and update it either. But in this case, I've tested what they told me. Disk management is the application that I'm going to use. I know now that his article is, type, is titled Help in Disk Management. So if you type that in from this screen and say go, you'll end up where I am. Uh, not much point in me running a video where all I do is read what's on the internet. So you guys, uh, if you care enough to understand the details, if it fascinates you, please come back here and choose the article of your uh, your desire it's all in there um, what I've done is read that first most of it so that I can run this video successfully and not give you too much bum data the application I'm running is disk manager disk management I should say uh, where it comes from is you right click on the task button this is as easy as any you can get there just by typing in on search but disk management was right there when I clicked it, it ran, it went to the taskbar, and it showed up here. And this is the picture that I posted the other day on the uh, firmware flashing uh, channel on the Discord. It's now pinned up there, just as evidence that you really can take a removable SD card and subdivide it, uh, which was not always the case. Uh, back, I think, around Vista, Windows 7, people were trying to do it there were special drivers you could buy from special people that would bypass windows and make it work for you um, you don't have to do any of that rubbish anymore it's native so when uh, I, I did this in step two and I said shrink the volume and poof I had the three gig drive I stopped here and I kept going with the process and said I would come back at some point and revisit what was going to happen here and what else there is to know and I'm only doing that really because I'm able to get myself into all kinds of trouble at times and it may happen to you too and if you've seen it here you may remember and be able to cope with it very easily this software is, is quite capable of doing all the work without you having to resort to a paid partition management software utility but it's not necessarily self-evident how that works and there are some interaction issues that I'm running into between uh, File Explorer and Disk Management where um, irritation and aggravation are going to compound your troubles and as you mash buttons and things are not happening it's going to cause you a lot more grief than necessary so I just wanted to preface all that that if you watch this carefully and you you know, you're patient with the tool I think you can do everything you want to do. This space I'd like to make use of for my own file storage. The printer will not see this space. The printer will see this one. Make it as big as you like to hold your print files. When you're done with flashing, if you like, you can just keep doing that. It'll ignore the flash um, firmware when you stick the disk in there. And you can browse with the um, uh, community firmware. You can actually have folders and browse the folders and so on to get to your print files. It's very convenient. But it'll only see the first primary partition. It won't see anything else. When you're looking in here then to see, um, here I am flashing it, the darn thing doesn't see the card or it isn't working properly. One of the things I thought you might want to look at is what kind of partition system did you put on the card or did somebody put on the card? Maybe you've reused a card that was formatted and partitioned by something else like a digital camera or the Raspberry Pi uh, distribution software or something um, Linux related. If uh, if you had a paid partition manager you would see here an indicator as to whether it was GPT or MBR. Is this a master boot record partition definition on the storage device 
or is it a GUID partition table device? Um, you can't tell from here, but what I have discovered by comparing my paid partition management software with this one on the same drives is I know this to be a GPT drive and it says basic data partition not primary partition. These say primary partition. I know these to be MBR drives. So I'm inferring from that that that's a way you can tell the difference. Somebody may know better. Please leave comments if you do. But my inference from my experience is GPT drives will say basic data partition here. MBR drives will say primary partition here for the first three partitions. If you look at the documentation I showed you on Microsoft support, you'll discover that um, you have a limit of four primary partitions on a master boot record uh, partition system. However, um, you can make more than four partitions. And this is what that looks like. I did post this on the um, firmware flashing uh, Discord channel if you want to see uh, what I found I could do. It says it's true. You're not limited to finding somewhere in your grab bag the last disk that's 16 gigs or smaller uh, from previous days when they actually sold those things in stores. You can use 32, 64, 128, 256, whatever you find. You can use it as long as you discover this way how to partition things to get you your FAT32 4K partition as the first primary partition on your drive and then go for there. Uh, with whatever you like on the rest of it. So I've launched a wizard by right clicking on the unallocated space. If I hit next, it says, shall we make the whole thing a uh, usable drive? And I'm going to say yes for the time being, because I want to show you other things. And this is the fastest way to do it, I think. Leave this as NTFS. When you read the documentation, it'll tell you at the time the document was written, they don't always keep them up to date, but at the time it was written, only NTFS file systems can be shrunk. And I'm going to shrink in a minute. So I'm going to leave it as NTFS. I'll leave it as default because I don't care. It's not going to last very long. I'm not going to bother in labeling it. I'm just going to say go, go, go. And if I wait patiently, patience is that word. Yeah. It opens up in File Explorer. It shows me that I now have an F as well as an E. If I close that off, get out of my way. Sometimes I find if I operate too quickly here, I, I don't get this. This time I did, of course, because I'm trying to show it to you. But I find that when I close File Explorer and then I interact again with that same drive here in Disk Management, there are times when I have to click the a couple of times before I get what I'm looking for. And I think it's some kind of a condition where File Explorer in the background has to let go of the disk before this application can have the disk. And it gets stuck before it launches this window trying to access the disk. Conjecture, all I say is be patient because this thing can be really irritating when you just want to get something done and it's not responding. Okay, shrink F. I want to shrink it. The size I'm going to have after it shrinks is this number here, right? The 3122. And the number here that I can change is how much I want to take away from what I already have. So I'm just going to leave it like that, say shrink. And now I have two primary volumes, both healthy, and an allocated space. I do that again as fast as I can. Oops. Sorry. When I say to allocate this, I'm not shrinking, I'm allocating. That's this wizard, and it offers to use the whole thing. So rather than have to shrink it again, let's make it the three gigs I was going to ask for anyway. Just so eager. I just want to go, go, go. So now I have an E, an F, and a G. So all those guys on, on the internet who say Windows won't recognize, they're out of date. This is Windows and it is recognizing one, two, three volumes. Now they're all primary partitions so far. I have an allocated space here. I'm a greedy boy. I want to use all of it. So I come along and I do this again. And for whatever reason, I'm enjoying 3 gig partition sizes. So it gives me H. 
it says let's do it what did that message say will not be compatible with previous oh yes because I'm using a file system as an allocation unit size greater than 32k. Interesting. Well, okay to that. Now I have an E, F, G, and H. But, oh! pretty colors. Down here at the bottom was a key to recognize the color of everything you're looking at. It's like Monopoly uh, spaces on a board. Yeah, These are the good ones. Dark blue, primary partition, one, two, three. The fourth one has been turned into something called an extended partition, which again was presaged in the documentation I pointed you to in the beginning. Um, I now have my first logical drive instead of a primary partition and I can have a bunch of these more than you're gonna want to make I promise you and bright green free space which is the equivalent of unallocated but in truth to be technical about it it's been allocated to this extended partition it's just not formatted as a volume with a drive letter right now okay? which I can do and You'll recognize this picture because I'm sure you frequent the Discord and you'll have seen what I did there. It's true, it says. I can do this. Older Windows machines, 8, 1, 7, won't be able to see these sectors, but 10 and 11 do. I now have E, F, G, H, I. Come on, show me the eye. There we go. And free space. Right. And you know what? It doesn't end here. Just to be goofy about it. So now I've added a J. I could keep going. Now, the other thing to know is the MBR table itself doesn't update itself if I take things away. If I delete these volumes here, I'll still be left with this extended partition volume with these logical drives and this free space. You just this will all just go to unallocated. Right? If I right click and I say delete volume, it takes away G in this case. Right, the letter's gone. This is unallocated, black, unallocated. It's available if the tool would allow me to extend a volume. Although in this case, I don't believe that's an option here for an SD card. It's grayed out. But if you wanted to make um, these two spaces into one, you could do it by deleting both of these and repartitioning the space to the sizes you wanted. It's not going to change this. This is still going to look like this. Okay, and The printer can only see this part. So I think that's enough. Um, I've dragged you through the mud a little bit. Um, you could keep going yourself and experiment. The documentation is on Microsoft where I left it. Do have fun. Try not to get yourself too deeply admired in, in, uh, in difficulty. It's tempting, I know. Uh, but our goal is to be making things real in 3D. That's the printer part. Not this. Bye-bye. <laughs>